Sutherland Shire Family Services 2020 Annual Showcase of Services. My name is Danielle and I'm the Coordinator of Aboriginal Services. I'm a proud Aboriginal woman from the Yuin Wurrumbai Tribe from the south and north coast of New South Wales. Sutherland Shire Family Services acknowledges the Gwigal people of the Durable Nation. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that it's because of their courage, wisdom and resilience that Aboriginal culture has survived. We acknowledge our first Australians' unique and spiritual relationships to the lands, waters, seas and their rich contribution to society. We extend our respects to other first Australians and non-Indigenous people joining us today. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this year's annual showcase of services. This year, in true 2020 style, uh, we are showcasing our services from the comfort of your own office or home. We would like to therefore welcome you and acknowledge our special dignitaries and supporters who are joining us online this year. The support from our community and stakeholders is integral to the work that we do, and we appreciate your ongoing support. You will find the agenda for this year's annual showcase of services on the screens in front of you. We look forward to sharing some of our highlights from this year. It is my pleasure, along with our board, to present this year's annual report for the 2019 to 2020 financial year. From this report, you will be able to see what another busy and full year it has been for our organisation. It is a great honour and privilege for me to take on the role of CEO at Sutherland Shire Family Services and have the opportunity to lead this wonderful organisation as we continue to refine our areas of expertise and expand our service delivery, continuing to grow and adapt, develop our services in accordance with community and client needs. We are committed to working with individuals, families and community, as well as building strong partnerships with us key stakeholders to continue to strengthen our impact and ensure that the children and families that we work alongside have safe homes, strong connections and opportunities to thrive. 2019 to 2020 has been another dynamic year for Sutherland Shire Family Services. The team at SSFS are exceptional. We couldn't do what we do without their dedicated uh, skilled and professional staff who are each so passionate about supporting and improving the opportunities for the children, young people, women and families that we work alongside. I cannot thank the team enough for welcoming me with open arms this year and for their hard work and commitment. This year has seen the need for change and adaption both within our community and within our organisation as we respond to the impacts from the devastating bushfires to the COVID-19 pandemic. The SSFS team have gone above and beyond to ensure that our clients remain connected and supported during these challenging times. We adapted our service delivery method and provided opportunities for clients to connect and participate online via video conferencing and telephone support. We had some fantastic achievements this year with the Toolbox Talks program providing services nationally from late 2019 to the implementation of our Reconciliation Action Plan. We also proudly supported 3,139 women through our Southern Sydney Women's Domestic Violence Court Advocacy Service. We received 587 referrals into our Children and Family Support Services. 190 families were provided with individual family casework support and we had 1,082 1, young people attend our Eddie's group sessions. These were delivered by our youth and family support workers and we also provided support to 1,307 young people who visited our Eddie's drop-in centre. Some truly outstanding outcomes. We also unfortunately had some disappointment this year during the peak of the COVID-19 um, pandemic when we made the very difficult decision to close our Janaba Occasional Childcare Centre. 
The wonderful educators who have worked as part of the Janaba team enriched the lives of many children and families within our community over the last 20 years. I sincerely thank them for their services and contributions towards the organisation. The SSFS board are a skilled and dedicated group of individuals who are passionate about achieving Sutherland Shire Family Services mission. They have volunteered their time to ensure that SSFS is governed to the highest standards and generously give their expertise, support and leadership. As the incoming CEO, I have greatly appreciated their support and assistance in welcoming me to the organisation. I thank each of them for their crucial contributions, tireless work and inspirational leadership. I would also like to thank our team of valued volunteers. I'm constantly inspired by their selflessness, kindness and generosity. The support that we receive from the community throughout the year is integral towards the ongoing delivery of some of our programs. SSFS is extremely fortunate to have many supporters, donors and partners, without whom many of our key programs would not be able to continue to be delivered. It has been a pleasure to get to know each of our stakeholders over this past year and it has been wonderful to work alongside each of you as we collectively achieve positive outcomes for our clients and the broader community. I sincerely thank each of you for your valuable contributions and support towards Sutherland Shire Family Services. SSFS was also fortunate to receive a number of government funding contracts. I would like to extend thanks to our state and federal government partners who continue to invest in Sutherland Shire Family Services and recognise our unique integrated services and specialisations. 2021 is looking to be another busy and exciting year for Sutherland Shire Family Services as we embark on our strategic plan for the 2020 to 2023 period. It is hoped that this future focus plan will firmly ground our areas of expertise and specialisations and enhance the impact and opportunities that we can provide. As we move into this exciting next chapter for the organisation, we will continue to have lasting and meaningful impact as we support and strengthen the capacity of individuals and families within our community. As many of you know, one of the unique things about our service model is we provide a holistic wraparound services for our clients. I'd now like to introduce the BRIC team leader, Melissa Philbrook, who's going to give you a service showcase highlighting what BRIC has achieved in the past 12 months. Please join me in welcoming Melissa. The Building Resilience in Children program, or BRIC program, helps parents and children who have left a domestic violence situation to rebuild secure and caring relationships and allow them to heal from the trauma that they have experienced. We do this by creating a therapeutic environment to work with families, engaging all of their senses and trying to create a sense of safety in the centre so that they are able to explore their experiences and be open to learn. The program is built around three main groups. The first one we deliver is our in-house developed Healing Connections group. In this group, we explore current information from attachment theory and neuroscience from Dan Siegel, Peter Levine, and Dan Hughes, among others. We explain the science behind how healthy brains develop, why secure relationships are so important for children, how their brains are impacted by the experience of trauma, and what symptoms or behaviors you may see as a result. We also talk about how to respond to these behaviors in nurturing and effective ways. It is exciting that current neuroscience research is discovering evidence that backs up what we have always instinctively known, that strong connected relationships heal. We then provide Circle of Security Parenting Program, which helps parents to think about their relationships with each of their children and gives them a map of what children's emotional needs are and how to respond to them. Circle of Security encourages parents to recognize their own emotions and needs can sometimes get in the way of parenting the way they want to and by recognising that their children's behaviour is actually communication of a need and reflecting on how they can meet those needs better and we can develop stronger connections. As they say in the program, 50 years of research about attachment relationships lets us know that having secure relationships are the best way to provide secure futures for our children. 
The final part of our program is the Growing Resilience Group, in which we invite the families to participate in therapeutic activities together. This is time for them to take a pause from their busy lives and to focus on each other and to enjoy activities that have a therapeutic basis. One woman told us that having the children come in at the end of the program was a nice way to finish as it provided her with hope for the future. Alongside the group work, we offer individual sessions tailored to each woman's need, whether she wants to process the content of the groups in more detail, have some general support, troubleshoot things that are happening in her own home, or do some extra work with her children. We are very proud of how the BRIC program has flourished over the last year despite all of the challenges we've had, not the least of which was the lockdown from COVID-19. The team rose quickly to the occasion and we were able to provide a seamless service to the women, providing the groups on Zoom, including our growing resilience group in which we sent home home packs so that they could still engage with the activities with us. Our referrals have increased and we are reaching a wider variety of women and maintaining solid numbers who are staying through the whole program. We are well on track to provide the full program to 60 families by the end of next year, which will meet the requirements for the University of Wollongong Research Project to look at the effectiveness of our program. I have recently been supporting the researchers in contacting some of the families who have completed the program six months or more ago to complete their follow-up survey. And it has been so gratifying to hear how well they are doing and that they are continuing to use the skills and tools they have developed while working with us and how happy and proud they are of how their children are doing. Our program is all about building stronger relationships and connections between the women we work with and their children, with seeing with ourselves as well as with the other women in the program. One of our biggest pleasures is seeing the relationships between the women who come to the group grow into friendships, supporting each other through difficult and uncertain times. I'll finish with the words of some of the women who have worked with us over this past year, as I believe they explain it better than I can. One woman I spoke with reflected that the way we set up the group, look after the clients and listen to them allows them to feel safe and that this has continued into their friendships. She told me, coming out of our situation, we are isolated and knowing that other people have been in a similar situation and have pulled through, now I have a group of friends. Another woman told me that when she finished the program, you help people who are here after they have left the violence. Living through domestic violence leaves a big injury in our heart. You help us to try to release it. You encourage the mums and give them confidence that what they did, leaving the relationship, was the right thing to do. Another mum told me, I see the children so differently now. I can understand what they need and how to respond to them. I had support before and heard some of the same things, but I wasn't in the right place to take them in. I had too much going on in my head. Doing the BRIC program allowed it all to make sense and to get what I needed to do to change. Thanks, Melissa. I'd like to acknowledge all the work that Melissa and her team do in supporting families. As you'll see in the annual report, the BRIC team are a huge part of this specialised trauma-informed work that we provide here at Sutherland Shire Family Services to the community. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to Jade Lindsay. Jade is the project coordinator for our Toolbox Talks program and is here to provide a service highlight on what's been happening in the Toolbox Talks team and program over the past 12 months. Please join me in welcoming Jade. From July 2019 until June 2020, the Toolbox Talks program was delivered to 2,018 individual participants. Um, that alone is a big highlight for our program, um, given that in our entire pilot project period, which ran from October 2017 until June 2020, our target figure was 2,760. These, these figures in the last 12 months meant that we finalised our pilot period in June this year with over 5,300 individual participants. If we look back over the last 12 months on what the program has achieved in terms of program outcomes, so 88% of participants reported that they now knew more about the different types of domestic violence. 90% of participants believed they were more likely to speak up if they saw someone being disrespectful to a woman. 88% believed that they now knew more about the impact of domestic violence. And 91% reported that they felt that they could do something to prevent violence against women and children. 
those are pretty significant outcomes for us. We, we never expected to see um, outcomes with such high percentages, but we are very proud of that. Um, and particularly proud of the fact that we've been able to motivate people to see themselves as having the responsibility and the skills to be able to intervene rather than stay silent on this issue in Australia. When we reviewed our data though, we found that in 83% of our sessions, someone stayed behind afterwards to seek support or information. Um, and that was sometimes about themselves, sometimes about their history as children, sometimes about advice for friends, family, someone in their workplace. Um, so yeah, in 83% of, of sessions. So the Toolbox Talks program is continuing to go strong and we are very pleased to still be able to deliver it across Australia. Thanks Jade. The Toolbox Talks team has been working really hard over the past 12 months, particularly after the COVID-19 restrictions came in and the team worked quickly to adapt the program to be able to continue to service the community. I now have a great pleasure in introducing you to the Sutherland Shire Family Supported Playgroup. Supported playgroups provide an opportunity for caregivers to connect with one another and provide their children with the opportunity to engage in a range of activities aimed at increasing developmental skills and support from our trained early childhood staff. So please join me in welcoming Sutherland Shire Supported Playgroup. I've been swallowed by a boa constrictor. I've been swallowed by a boa constrictor. I've been swallowed by a boa tirelessly in supporting the children and families who attend. We also have many volunteers who have supported the playgroup over the past 12 months who we're also very thankful for. It's now my great pleasure to introduce you to Danielle DaCosta, our Aboriginal Services Coordinator, who's going to present to you a service showcase on the Aboriginal family projects that we have here at Sutherland Shire Family Services. Today I have the honour of showcasing some of the highlights achieved from our three Aboriginal programs. Koori Kids have welcomed another successful reporting period with many notable highlights. We had 23 families enrolled from 2019 to 2020. We were also fortunate enough to have father and grandparent participation in our playgroup. We offered 28 playgroup sessions with an average of 10 children attending per session. The number of sessions we offered were impacted by COVID restrictions, but staff used creative and flexible ways to support and engage families from afar. Families received the following support and engagement during COVID-19. Regular phone contact with staff was made, art and craft packs to entertain their children at home, themed recorded weekly group times featuring stories, songs, craft activities and cooking suggestions. Our focus on connection and culture to the community this year included our official starting partnership with Karanoa Aboriginal Corporation to deliver the playgroup, inviting well-respected elder Auntie Deanna Scriver to the playgroup where families and staff were part of an interactive group time sharing cultural stories, songs, dances and art. And we also were able to attend our annual field trip to Symbio. Some feedback and comments that the staff received from families attending the playgroup included, the children love watching the group times every week. They sing the songs used and we do the craft as a family at home. The families also thanked the staff for the phone calls and checking in on them um, during the hard time of being stuck inside with small children and limited adult interaction. My child, they also added that their child loved the art packs that they received and now that they have the words for the songs used in group time, they can sing along too. In terms of the Aboriginal Family Worker Project, 
we have supported 35 families over the reporting period. The project continue to focus on working collaboratively with local agencies to assist our families. Some of these agencies include the Department of Community and Justice, both Child Protection and Housing, the Department of Education and Local Schools, Narang Gorais, NDIS Services and Providers. Some of the supports Aboriginal family workers have been able to access for our families include financial assistance, both food hampers and household items, clothing for the children, school backpacks, group and one-to-one -one parenting programs and support, linking children into therapy-based interventions, securing long-term affordable housing and legal support, and safety planning for women escaping domestic violence. Lastly, I would like to share a good news story from the Aboriginal Family Worker Project. Support was provided for a single mum with three small children. Two of the children had been diagnosed with complex learning difficulties. The children had limited to no services involved that could support their development. The family were living in a private rental with unsatisfactory amenities and their quality of life was impacted by low living standards and the high cost of rent. They had limited access to social and community supports and mum has low literacy levels which res restricted her ability and confidence when advocating for her family's needs. The Aboriginal Family Worker Project were able to assist the family to secure supports that improved family and living circumstances, educational outcomes and increased social connections. Housing advocacy was provided and the family now live in a long-term affordable property. The family was linked into a service that applies for NDIS and both children have been approved for packages under the scheme and are now receiving intervention therapies, including speech therapy and occupational therapy. The caseworker accompanied mum to many school case meetings and was able to support a school transfer for the eldest child to a school that are, are better able to meet the child's educational needs. The middle child is now enrolled in a quality preschool setting and the youngest child is linked into a local early childhood service and regularly attends Curry Kids Playgroup. Mum has completed a parenting program through SSFS. On closing with this family, Mum gave the following comments in her evaluation. I now have long-term housing thanks to the service for helping me with my application. She also added that she wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the support of my caseworker. So many times she was able to help me see reason and think of things in a different way and to take a different approach. Lastly, on closing, I would like to encourage anyone who has any questions or inquiries or would like to make any referrals to please contact the service. I'd now like to invite Ashley back for the, her closing remarks for this year's annual service showcase. Please welcome back Ashley. Thank you for joining us today. Our annual showcase of services provides an opportunity for reflection, gratitude, and highlights the incredible work that we are collectively able to achieve towards supporting our community. 2020 to 2021 has already started out to be an exciting year for SSFS as we embark on our next strategic plan. I encourage you to take the opportunity over the coming year to ask questions about our services, to pop in and say hello, and explore the many ways in which you can be involved. The unique wraparound nature of our services puts the client at the centre of everything that we do, as we work to help families rebuild their lives following disadvantage, violence and trauma. We look forward to continuing to support more children young people and women, and of course families in the coming year, along with your ongoing support. Thanks for joining us.